As you have probably picked up on by now, one of my favorite modules in my entire collection is the XOR Electronics NerdSec Hybrid Tracker Sequencer. This is the reason why we're here today is because I just picked up the multi IO module, which has a host USB, a device USB. It has these two jacks for in and out. It has this uh, I2C circuitry and then this wonderful little edit button. So when you're in one of the cells doing things, instead of having to tap, tap, tap everything, now you can just turn it up. Just to make sure to call him out by name, Mountain Biker, this is your fault. <laughs> I have this module right now, and I now have to completely redesign my entire NerdSec layout. And here's why. Because the cables that come with NerdSec, the ones that are packaged with it are pretty lengthy because you want to be able to put these all over, you know, anywhere you want in your rack. The problem now is that things are just not the way where I want to put them. These cables are not long enough, or they wind up being a really big pile of cable to go from one to the other right back behind it. What we're doing here today is we're actually going to make some new cables. For nerd sec. <sighs> now I've made hundreds of cables for the rack itself for mostly for power going from my, my bus boards that are all over the place. Uh, this because my case here got wound up being pretty big So I needed to make the little the little power cables that come with modular are not long enough So I made some <laughs> some pretty pretty long uh, 18 inch power cables. So if I flip all of this over And keeping in mind that nerd sex left is now over here So I'm literally flipping everything over what I want is I want the IO on the far left of the mo of the modular. Can you see that? Yeah, it's way over here. Because there's HDMI jacks and things that come out of this and USB that I don't want all over the modular. So I put I'm putting this at the far left of the modular. So this has to come out like it has to come out of this NSA jack here, come over to this this multi IO, then it has to come out of multi IO over to more CV and then out of more CV to more trigger. So that's a pretty big leap. And these cables no longer represent those traversals. So the idea is to make some new cables. Modular in general winds up being like a, a little 10 pin for power and a 16 pin for the five volt or, or distributed bus connections are usually 16 pin, but NerdSec conveniently is not, is neither <laughs> 16 pin, nor is it 10 pin. It is oddly 14 pin. So finally, after buying tons of, of little connectors online, I finally have 14 pin to be able to plug this in and see one of these is 14 the next one over is 12 and then of course we have the the 10 so i'm going to start with the very easiest one and that's this one over here uh let me find my first 14 pin guy all right so that's this guy what i want because previously this would come over here and then this whole big wad of cable would just be laying inside my modular having to and I'd have to zip tie it or do something to get it to be tiny when all I wanted to do is go right here because these two are always going to be next to each other like this always I have no reason to ever make them any other way so I'm going to cut this I'm going to brazenly cut this wire right here right now and I'm going to put on a new a new seven pin where's my seven pin i lost it already all right so i think i think what i want to do is let me let me see if i can hold these in my hand and get it to a place that i need it to be uh, and they're not i don't know if you can see this on the camera but they're not straight over they do go up a little bit so i do have to leave a little bit of play in the cable here so that there, so there's a little a verticality switch here. I think I'm going to cut this right here at the at the one. There's a one on. Uh, is that a one? Yeah, there's a one there. 
So what, what I would like to do with this, and uh, <laughs> this is going to be extremely dangerous. I don't think anybody in their right mind should do this this way, but this is how I'm going to do it because I am my father's son. I'm just going to put a surface down here that I can cut on, and I'm going to take this very sharp razor knife, which I've had since the 1980s. <laughs> it's pretty old. And I'm just going to cut straight down. Now, I had to push down pretty hard on that because what I don't want to do is drag some of these wires, like, so they're not touching each other. I don't want that to happen. So then I'm going to take this connector here. So this is a, this is on this side, the red's on that side. So I want the red to be on that side again, because that's how the connector connects. And I'm going to slide it right inside here. And I don't know if you can see this on the, on the video all that well, but that's okay. So I'm going to dry fit it. So I'm eyeballing it to be right on the inside of the five that's on the cable here. So I know how to, where I want to crimp this. And again, making sure that the key is facing the same direction as the connector. Getting that right in there. Taking my little crimpy tool here. Still on the five. Making sure it's straight. And then crimp. And that's it. So I now have a shorty. I'm going to have to cut all this off here in a moment, but I now have this little shorty. It's just going to connect these two together and it's not going to be a big giant mess inside the, the modular case. That's lovely. God, that's perfect. You know, as long as it works, it's perfect. All right, so now what I want to do is, of course, trim off the excess. And again, I need to be super careful to not let the, uh, the razor knife bend the the wires inside I want them to I want it to be a clean cut so I'm trying to do this in a way that's not going to risk my life and there you go can you see that all right so you see that's that's nice and flat all right so let's pretend that this this one's done and out of the way So the next one I need to do is the next long run. So this is a really long cable right here. Uh, this one might actually be fine the way it is. Let's take a look. Because this one has to come stretch over the entirety of NerdSec to get to these little connectors on this side. So this will be something like this. I think that'll be okay. I think having this flopping around down at the bottom, I think this will be okay, like this. The next one I wanna make that's short is going to probably just use this piece I just cut off because now I wanna come from here. And again, I'll try to wrap around the bottom. I have to flip this like this. And that might be, that might be a little too short. Maybe not. What do you think? You think that'll be okay still? All right, we'll leave this one as long as we can. I mean, I have other cables I could use over here, but I'm just going to try to be thrifty and use what I've got. 
It's straight. And crimp. Crimp and trim. Alright. I'm going to take this guy out of the more expander. I'm going to bring this guy in right here to this guy. And now our last connection that I think I need is going to be this pad midi here. And that is a 12 pin. Uh, to the MIDI bus. So if you needed to come out of this module to another MIDI module, you'd go, uh, you'd take a, a connector out here from through. I'm just going to put this in right here. And then I think this just simply goes right to there. Huh. That almost seems too easy, doesn't it? All right, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to cut some of this off. I'm going to put my connector on. I think that's going to be it. Crimp this guy down. Trim off any excess carefully. So in theory, <laughs> in theory, I have just shortened all of my cables or most of my cables and I no longer have a big giant mess of wires. Behind nerds like, all right, so what do you say we plug this this bad boy in and see if I see if I broke anything? I'm gonna actually film turning this on so that way if I just smoked and blew up my nerd sec, you're, you're gonna see that live. This is gonna be a little clunky, so hang with me while I figure this out. So the new module is going to be on the left side over here, with along with the nerd sec. So here's nerd sec's main power, and now I need one more power for the, the new module, the uh, extender. So this means I'm gonna I'm gonna plug in a new cable here. All right, so hold on while I tip this back up. All right. So now I supposedly have a new power for the I/O extender and for NerdSec. So this is gonna be funky <laughs> while I try to manhandle all five of these modules into place, so bear with me. And keep it, keep in mind, because I now shortened all my cables, I don't have a lot of play. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe that wasn't so brilliant. All right, so here goes the power to the new, the new module. And then here's the power to the NerdSec itself. And then the two extenders, how's that? All right, so here is Nerdy with his new extenders and I'm about to flip the power on for the sequencer rack. Oh shit. I mean, what could go wrong? If this blows up, mountain biker, I'm blaming you. Let 
Let's watch the init screen here, make sure all our modules are present. We want to see more CV, more trigger and video enabled. And then we want to go into, what do we want to go into? Can we even tell? <laughs> I don't even know. Uh, so if I'm on the C9, can you see that? Okay. You probably can't see that, but I'm going to, I'm going to turn the little knobby here and nothing works because I didn't go into setup yet. This guy doesn't have power. All right, so this is when the troubleshooting begins and I'm just not gonna bore you with that. <laughs> so let me, let me come back when this is all working and I'll tell you what I did to fix it. All right, so take a look at this. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see the words real clearly on the camera, but dopey me. I plugged the mini, the pad MIDI into through. So the arrow, this little tiny arrow down here, can you see that? This little tiny arrow here is pointing to this jack as through, but the MIDI bus is up above, so I have this plugged into the wrong jack. Which I hope was the problem. So let's put it all back together. Okay, we're hitting the power again. Let's see if this fixed it. Again, we're watching the init screen for any explosions, any mushroom clouds. Multi IO is now there. And the light is on. Look at that. And so now if I whirl the little edit knob, you can see the, well, I think you can see the values changing. So this is what I mean by this module is going to make editing a whole lot easier. So thank you, Thomas. Thank you, XOR Electronics, for not only your amazing module, but your continued expansions that just keep this thing becoming just amazing. Amazing. Do I say that enough? NerdSec is amazing. Absolutely amazing. This to me would be a must have module. I think if everything else went away, including my beloved Symphonian, I would have to have uh, NerdSec. All right. So this is a success story. Nothing caught on fire. I'm going to get everything mounted back into place. I'm going to have to juggle around some of my modules in the sequencer rack because this is a little wider than the 2HP that was in here. And this was a full case before, so I'm probably going to have to pull data back out and move some stuff around. So as usual, thank you for sticking with me and watching me make a fool of myself because this is not my normal forte. I'm a software engineer. I don't do hardware. But anyway, thank you for watching.